So what I'm thinking is I can put my super cap right in here. Power and ground to come around here. Go in right here. With a switch to be able to turn the cap off right here. And then I could test the circuit with them without the super cap in it. Or back and forth. And when I say super cap, I mean this guy. Except I'm gonna peel this little sticker off here. Peel that sticker off. Then we're gonna use some uh, tape to mask off this area so that these lights are still showing and I'm going to paint the whole thing black so it'll be cool because that's gay alright guys I got it masked off and we got a coat of paint on it with a little bit of bed liner to add some character and we're just going to let her dry and then tomorrow uh probably tomorrow evening after competition we'll see about putting it in there unless i get up early in the morning or unless i decide to work on it tonight which you guys know me that's entirely a possibility all right there's an idea what the finished product will look like with the light indicators and I also left paint off of the negative and positive on the capacitor itself so that when these terminals are removed, you can still see the positive and negative. But the terminals are marked as well with a positive and a negative. So we're good. Everything is hunky-dory. Of course, the paint's still wet, but, you know, it is what it is. All right. Let's see what it's looking like right now. The combination of uh, this combination of black spray paint and uh, so what I use is this stuff. Uh, I really really like this this particular paint, and I use a little bit of Raptor truck bed coating, specifically this stuff. Uh, the combination of those two gives me a slightly rough finish the really good coverage and it looks very clean and looks very factory so that's what we're going for it's not perfect but it looks pretty damn pretty damn good got good coverage on the sides the handles everything is nice and we'll get that put in sometime tomorrow I'm not going to fool with it tonight. I would if my I would if my Tahoe was parked over here in the garage, but it's not. So I don't particularly want to go out there and string up a light and all that stuff. So yeah, there you go. So I'm debating on whether I'm going to use uh, one of these or a breaker. Now this is a 500 amp. Uh, switch so positive wire positive wire you know your source and your load or your source and your load it doesn't matter which way they go but when you shoot power to these two wires right here it closes the switch and it'll handle 500 amps uh, it's literally designed for 12 to 24 volts DC and uh, We'll give you 500 amps of current carrying capacity. And uh, so there's this guy um, or a breaker. And I'm still still tossing the idea around of which one I'm going to do. Um, do that. Uh, have or something like this but I would need two of these to carry 500 amps this gives me the ability to switch it on the on the, in the location easier this this isn't the one but you know the same concept 
but this will handle more current uh, so it's probably what I would do and then I would just put a switch on this uh, maybe on a relay uh, on a relay with an ignition trigger off my amp turn on wire mm. I want to be able to turn this off separately, but I also want it to be controlled by the ignition. So I'd probably have an ignition wire going to a switch, and then from that switch to this, so that I could leave it in the on position and the ignition wire would trigger it on and off. I could also flip the switch to the off position and the ignition wire wouldn't do anything, it would just stay off. I want to have control both ways though. So, yeah. Now the idea is to be able to uh, bring in the capacitor for testing purposes. Um, testing how much SPL is gained by running the capacitor uh, for, you know, a short burst. So we know the capacitor cannot magically produce power over a length of time, but it can store up power like a spring. And uh, it's exactly what it is. It's like a shock, like a, like, a, like a suspension system for your electrical. It, it keeps the car stable when the road's bumpy, right? But it's also capable of that big amount of power for a short burst. So while you store it up, you know, pulling up into the lanes, uh, being able to, uh, to hold voltage at, whatever you're charging at, so I'm charging at say 14.6, 14.5, 14.6, that capacitor is literally going to be setting at that voltage. And it's going to start producing power as soon as power is called for. Whereas the lithium bank is going to start producing power when it gets down to its resting voltage, which is around 13.2, right? The AGM is going to start producing voltage when it gets down to like 12.7, 12.6, 12.8, somewhere in that range. But this capacitor is going to start trying to help as soon as the load is applied because it doesn't have a resting voltage. So if you're charging at 14 and a half volts, then as soon as you apply your amplifier to that, as soon as it starts pulling power, that capacitor is going to start dumping it right away. Uh, and then as it drops down to the uh, 13.2, the lithium is going to start bringing power in, and as, the, as that voltage drops on down to the mid 12s or the high 12s, then your your AGM is going to start bringing in. They're all going to be trying to help until, you know, of course you've you've run out of power in the capacitor. Capacitor is going to run out in like, you know, 10 10 seconds or less. But if you're pulling up into a lane, uh, trying to get that. 30 seconds that music score you know to get the maximum amount of score you can get in 30 seconds there's nothing saying that capacitor can't dump as much power as possible for five or six seconds and get that little kick to your SPL score so that's what we're going to find out is whether or not that is a thing and the way to test that is to be able to bring the capacitor into the game run the SPL meter same track same volume same everything then do it without the capacitor. It's real easy. It's going to show us what voltage, because the SPL meter is going to read the voltage and the, and the uh, frequency and the sound pressure. So being able to do all those things with each of those tests is going to give us really, really good scientific data. This is the thing we're working on. So the next video that you guys are going to see on this subject matter is going to be me installing this and figuring out a way to set I'm going to set it up but uh, tomorrow I'm going to be going live at uh, GP car audio at their show and then Sunday I'm going to be going live again at Carmel car audio in their show so I'm going to be doing two lives back to back uh, this project here is going to pick back up on video probably Monday um, Unless I get real frisky tomorrow evening or Sunday evening after the show, which I might, I'll pick up on this project. Uh, but as far as Saturday and Sunday, get ready for two big long live shows. It's going to be a day.
and I'm going to get some rest and get ready for it. Hopefully you guys are interested in this crazy stuff we're about to get done. There's going to be a whole lot more where this is coming from. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down there. Get her done.